Hello everyone! Today, we're doing a bit of a different video for you. You know, finding gold in rivers and streams and whatnot is not always about getting out there in the field and doing the prospecting. Sometimes prospecting is a lot about research. There's a lot about, you know, reading books and doing research through books and whatnot. There's also things about, you know, reading the geology of the rocks themselves. Sometimes it's all about, you know, looking at that special rock there and finding out what is in that quartz and where that gold is. Yes, there's gold in that rock right now. Reading the rocks themselves to see what they have to say. Obviously, you have to do the reading of the rivers and the streams. I've done lots of videos on that. You have to get out there, look at the geology of the land. You know, we got to go out there and read the maps. Look at the maps and check out where the rivers flow, where there's access, where there's road. There's lots and lots of research involved. Today, I'm going to do some reading of the gold itself. I'm going to throw some gold under a microscope and see what the gold has to tell me about where it came from and where I might find some more of it. Specifically on that Fraser River claim that has showed me those pickers and nuggets and I want to see if it can tell me where to find more of them. So, here we go. Let's go into the microscope and see what we see. So I have the little USB microscope here. This plugs right into my computer so I can navigate around and take images. I've got some gold from that Fraser claim, including that uh, possible platinum nugget I got last time. Got some pieces underneath there already, a little pin for pointing around. Some more big pickers. Got it on a blue background because I, see, I seem to think that contrast works nicely with the gold. And we're going to go underneath the microscope and see what this looks like. So to start with here, this is a picture of the pickers and nuggets and whatnot I've got below the pin from that one uh, trip to that Thompson claim. Above the pin is one little flake. There's my pinky finger in there. One little flake, which is actually a typical big flake from the Fraser River. There's your typical big flake and there's what I've been getting from that uh, claim so far. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick little zoom in of a typical big flake from the Fraser River to see what it looks like. Okay here's your typical Fraser River flake of gold and uh, for the Fraser River this is a typical big flake of gold and there's just a pin coming in at it. Now let me just push in one of the pickers from this new claim. Oops. There's a picker beside it. You can see considerably thicker, considerably thicker and much bigger. About the same uh, surface texture on it. Okay, moving that uh, sort of typical Fraser flake aside, let's have a look at the rest of the pile of pickers and nuggets here. I'm just going to slide it underneath the microscope here and get an idea of the coarser gold and what it looks like just in a bit of a en masse type pile. may have to refocus a little bit to get some of these thicker pieces actually focused in here. There we go, up on the thicker pieces. Now let's start looking at some of these individual pieces and see what they tell us.
as I zoom in closer and closer on some of these pieces, the focus gets more and more difficult and I get much narrow, narrower depth of field. As you can see on this one right now, I'm so close that I can only focus on sort of the surface right now. Uh, as it sort of bends away, it goes blurry. But what I'm looking at right now is to see what the surface of the flat flake looks like. I see that one big pocket in there and that tells me a little bit because it hasn't been hammered shut. So this piece of gold possibly is not all that old. That's probably a piece like where some of the iron or pyrite or something was in the original gold. A uh, little pocket there that has not been sort of hammered in the rocks so much that it's closed off that little pocket. Looking around, this piece has been hammered pretty smooth all the way around for most of it though. So this piece looks to have traveled fairly well. I'm going to flip it over and look at the other side now. So here's the other side of that same piece. Again, a few indications there that there's still some sort of roughness of the original look of gold on it that possibly haven't been hammered down flat. Possibly. Hard to say on this one. Though I see this corner here has been hammered over a little bit, like it was captured in a bit of a crevice or something, and then rocks were bouncing over its surface, taking one of the edges and mushrooming it over a bit quite possible in this shale that I was pulled from. Okay, let's look at another piece. I'm leaving some of the nuggets and coarser pieces to later. Okay, I backed off the, fo uh, the zoom a little bit on this so I can get more of it into focus. And having a look at my next flake, this one looked fairly smooth on the surface. And you can see it's been polished on this one surface quite a bit by the river. Still a couple of dents in there. That one pocket in the middle has some sand left in it that hasn't been cleaned out yet. Uh, if I cleaned it I might be able to see a bit more inside to tell me a bit about that but I haven't cleaned it so I'm just going to leave that one. Flip it over and see what the other side looks like though. Now this we seem to be seeing a lot of at this claim. It's a folded piece of gold. Much bigger flat flake that at some point got folded over and hammered back in on itself. We're seeing probably a good quarter of the pieces of gold show some sort of folding going on. Which tells me that this stuff all fell into one good crack at one point, got squished down nice and flat and then into a big big flat flake then completely freed up out of its laid somewhat flattish on the surface somewhere and got jammed down into another crack where it folded down into another crack before it started wedging itself in and flattening out again folding it over like this and I'm seeing that on many many of our flakes Here's a smaller one. You can see definitely it's been folded right in half. Looks like a clamshell. Folded right in half. So again, showing us that folding effect going on. And here's one starting to show us a rougher surface. This is really why I wanted to bring these in and look at them because I see some of them with these really, really rough surfaces. And not so much on this one, a little bit, but some of the other ones really have some of these pockets that look like where stone has just broken straight off of the flake itself. Let's see if I can flip this one over. Yeah, maybe not so much on this one, maybe possibly a little bit. This one still looks to be sort of just hammered into the rocks as a flake. Let's pull one out that looks like it may still have some raw rock, where some raw rock had just broken off of the raw gold. Okay, here's one that gives me the impression that this isn't necessarily uh, marks left from hammering up against rocks as this gets washed down through the Fraser River, that some of these marks 
might be left where the quartz or ironstone has actually just peeled right away from the gold itself leaving these pockets you can see this little groove going down that looks very raw and natural so I'm thinking this is possibly still in its very very fresh stages of breaking out of the rock let's grab the next one I've got some better examples than this even so here's one of the better examples you can see this one still has some of the ironstone attached to the gold rusted mind you but still attached to the gold in here and other pockets where the iron has rusted away but still leaving the stain of rust in its wake where it's left those pockets open and you can see how natural those pockets are they haven't been eroded or washed or polished by the river at all this gives me a clue that this gold is very fresh out of the stone here's the back side of that same one where you can see that the high points have been polished for sure as the sand and gravel moves by these pieces in the river but the lower points like up in here still show the raw gold as it was when it came out of the rock looking at some of these uh, little microscopic nuggets those little small nuggets you can really see the raw gold there obviously the high points have been polished but those low points in that nugget that's just the way it was when it came out of the rock and let's bring in the the best example of this now the big nugget this one's gonna need a refocus too thick it's out of focus I guess focus on the top points you can see right now that the top points the outermost points are polished definitely the high points have been polished by tumbling through the river a bit zooming down and in a bit the lower points stained rusty now some of that white you see down in there that's just clay from where I dug it out of that crevice just the mud and clay but let me roll this over if I can get it back in that's what I want to show off right there here was the telltale sign for me that this is fresh fresh gold Let's see if I can turn up the light on this a little bit there we go you can see at the top point is polished polished from the river but right below it that's quartz quartz still attached to the gold when I saw that in that nugget that told me that possibly this gold was formed right there right on that spot not formed but released from the rocks right there there's no way gold can travel down the Fraser and not have its quartz bashed out of it there's a chance that this gold is right from that site itself I'm gonna zoom on zoom in on that a bunch more and see if I can get a closer up shot of that it'll take me a second to refocus though okay here I'm a bit closer on it now and I'm gonna focus right through from the bottom you can see the bottom of the nugget is in focus right now and yeah the high points are polished but you can see that quartz just above the the gold there is still blurry I'm gonna focus right through it if I can without moving around too much there we go it's starting to come into focus now 
There's a bit of mud and stuff around that quartz, but you can see it's attached to that gold. There's the quartz in focus now. Coming up right on the top there. Now there's that top no knob coming into focus. That quartz in there is part of that gold. This claim was quite a mystery to me of why there was coarse, coarse, big, for the Fraser, huge gold sitting in a place on bedrock that should not have caught gold. I'm starting to think that it's coming from the quartz seams that we see throughout that shale. It's being released from that quartz right there. And then it's getting polished like we see on its surface just by the sand and gravels going by on that bedrock. But the gold itself isn't moving. It's just staying right there. Zoom in on a different part of this. That's just clay from the mud that was around it. There it is. My best proof, if you will. It's not proof, but it's giving me a good idea of why there is big coarse gold sitting in a place that we shouldn't necessarily find it. Well, I hope that was interesting looking at gold under the microscope. It's always fascinating to see all the intricacies of those little flakes and nuggets. I love seeing that. Oh, before I go away, let's throw that little platinum nugget underneath there and see what it looks like. I'm not sure it's platinum. I'm just calling it that for now until I know better. But there we go. There's that other piece of metal, whatever it might be. Sure looks like some of the platinum nuggets I've seen before. Well, there we go, everyone. I hope you find this as fascinating as I do, looking at this gold nice close-up like, like this. As I said, this is a very different video from most of the videos I do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like to this video. Comment on what you think of seeing this gold up close and personal like this. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and if you do subscribe, make sure you click the bell icon so you get notifications when I put out new videos. Thank you to all my patrons out there for supporting me in my endeavors. And until my next video, which hopefully will be really, really soon. Bye!